Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to a pre-recorded episode of Jerry's Live. Now, emphasis on the pre-recorded part of that, because I'm not here. I'm actually off at a residency in France. So I, uh, unfortunately, was not able to actually make it live, but we are going to make sure that our moderators and everybody in the team, as well as myself, we're going to be answering those questions for you guys. So please feel free to pop any of your comments and you know, responses and questions in the chat below, and we will make sure to get back to you. So let's jump over to the episode. Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I am your host this evening. And today I wanted to talk about uh, painting over a grisaille underpainting uh, and how to glaze colors on top of a black and white painting uh, to achieve something that is nice and vibrant and brilliant, just like a banana. How do you take a banana? that's black and white and make it yellow, right? So I wanted to go over how to get that really, really vibrant color over an underpainting. Um, so to go over what we are using, first and foremost, you need an underpainting and it needs to be fully dry. So this is completely dry. It's been drying for quite a while. Um, you know, it is a very, very lean layers of paint. Uh, so whenever you do start your grisaille painting, uh, you want to make sure that you don't use a whole lot of fats because we're going to have to add in those layers of additional fatty layers to get it to stick to this and have it nice and uh, archival over time. Uh, so this is a very lean painting. Uh, I can say my highlights is, are a little bit thicker. Uh, so I would say at this stage, I almost call this my pure paint stage. So uh, I've gone through my lean layers. I've gotten a little bit of pure paint on here. So I, I need to continue that fatty layer. Uh, so besides this, which is on uh, one of our Bell RT panels, um, and everything is linked in our teacher's cart, so you guys can go to cherriesartorama.com and check it out there. Uh, but this is my Bell RT panel. And then I also am gonna be using the Lucas 1862 oils. So I have a variety of colors here on my palette that will go with my banana painting. Uh, I have lemon yellow, which is a primary. I have an Indian yellow. I have a transparent yellow oxide, which I know it looks a little bit more brown, but that is actually a nice, you know, darker kind of yellow color. Then I have a Lucas red, a cobalt violet hue. Se uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is not sap green. I thought it was. This is chromium oxide green, excuse me. And then we also have a burnt sienna. Now you also can see I do have uh, two piles of white down in my corners. The reason why I do that is when I am doing a full color painting, I like to have two different piles of paint uh, for my whites. I keep one for all of my warm colors and one for all my cool colors. That way they don't get muddy. Uh, it's a, just a trick that I've learned in college and it's one of those things that if you continue <laughs> that kind of a trick, it, it very, very, very helpful to keep your colors nice and clean. Uh, then besides that, I do have a palette cup here, and that is filled with a medium. Now, I wanted to go over mediums real fast. I am going to be using the Chelsea Classical Studio mediums because there are so many out there, and every brand has uh, mediums that will make your paintings, uh, your, your oil paint lean, and then you have ones that'll make it more fatty. Uh, so I am only going over the Chelsea Classical Studio, but you should be able to actually check out uh, each brand and see which one it will do. Uh, you know, whether or not it gives you a transparency and adds in fat, that's something you want to pay attention to. All right, so I wanted to go over lean medium. Lean medium is what I would use in my initial underpainting layers. Uh, this is a combination of linseed oil and spike oil, so it's that solvent that's going to knock down your fat layers, hence why it's a lean medium. Uh, but this is a nice way of getting a really thin, lean layer. I will not be using this in this stage it should have already been used. Uh, then I have linseed oil. Now this is actually what I'm gonna be using today because uh, your pure oil paints are gonna land in between lean medium and your linseed oil. So I've already applied pure paint on here, so I'm already at that stage. I need to move on to the next stage to add in those fats. So linseed oil will add in the fatty content that I need for it to really stick really nice to my my initial painting. Uh, then if you continue on with your paints and you find that you still need additional layers, you can go in with a fat medium, just as it would 
makes sense, it adds in more fat than a linseed oil. So this is a combination of linseed oil, spike oil, and damar resin. So that damar resin is going to give you a clue, and whenever you see that, that's gonna be for your final layers. You don't wanna add in a ton of this into uh, kind of your middle layers just because that damar resin is very, very hard and it's hard to kind of stick things to it. So this is your very upper layers. So if you wanted to continue on and add in additional layers after you get through this stage, then that would be the medium you wanna use. But today I'm gonna be using linseed oil. And because these are making me nervous, I'm gonna put them over here. <laughs> I don't wanna knock those off. It's, they are glass bottles and this is a small tabaret and I'm running out of space. All right, besides that, I do have a brush cleaner as well. So if I need to knock off some of the pigments off of my brushes, I'm gonna just kinda swirl it around in there. And then I am gonna also be using a variety of the New York Central brushes. I have a combination of the, the mixed bristles and Kalinsky sables, uh, just a you know, handful of the ones that I grabbed. Again, everything's linked in that teacher's cart. So if you're interested in the, the brushes that I'm using, check them out there. So the surface I'm going to be using is actually the Raphael oil primed linen panel. This is 3 eighths of an inch th thick, and then it has a beautiful oil primed linen surface that I already did my initial grisaille painting on. So let's get started, because we got a lot of painting to get to. Okay, so to start my glaze layers, um, I am going to actually just jump straight into that yellow because I really want you guys to see how well glazing works. Now you can build up your layers very slowly and very subtly, um, but I'm gonna actually punch in that yellow and just, it's gonna be bam banana. So what I do is I'm gonna actually dip straight into my linseed oil, get a nice layer over here, and I'm gonna grab a little bit of this lemon yellow. Now. When you have transparent colors, uh, you can actually use pure paint onto your grisaille painting, which you might think that, you know, why would I do that then, you know, because the grisaille painting at that point is a moot point. Uh, but, you know, your, your form is already there. All the shadows should already be there. Uh, right now, we are only focused on the, the, the color uh, like the chroma and you know the values that you're seeing and what those values happen to be. So the shadows, it's not this bright yellow. It's it's got more of that kind of transparent yellow oxide color, and maybe a hint of red in there. You know, maybe a little bit of purple. You know, try and really focus on those colors that you're seeing, and you know your your value drawing is already there. So uh, the transparent colors are going to give you a really nice thin color that you're applying, uh, but the more opaque ones, if you add in a little bit more linseed oil, you should get a nice transparency to it as well. So like the titanium white, I might add more linseed oil to it rather than like the transparent yellow oxide. So let's get it nice and soupy here, and I'm keeping it rather thin because I want you to see the differences in how I can get that color uh, when I use a little bit more pigment to my linseed oil. So let's actually start down here and you see just how quickly it all of a sudden is a banana. Now, be aware that that underpainting layer, because my glazes are so thin, it is going to affect the color that I lay down on top of it. So that, that underpainting happens to actually not be black and white. I use Payne's Gray, because you're not actually stuck in using just black or burnt sienna or burnt umber, any of those traditional grisaille colors, you can use Payne's Gray, you can use magenta, you can use green, you can use any color that gives you a nice dark tone whenever you're building them up, but they will affect your colors like this. So this kind of appears green. I made a green banana. It's got a lot of bad spots on it, but it's a green banana. So when I add in a little bit more of this lemon yellow pigment to that linseed oil mix. And I make it a little bit thicker as far as the pigment that's already on there. Let's actually start up here. You see how that, that color is actually affecting, or the, the underpainting is affecting that color a little bit less and it's still, the, it's still coming through. So all my values are still there, 
but that yellow is sitting on top of it a little bit more as far as uh, you know the values are concerned it's it's still there but um, that yellow is a little bit stronger that's the word I'm looking for words is it an episode of Jerry's Live if I don't say words and stumble through my words a little bit? <laughs> so as you can see, that was a lot stronger than the thinner layers. Now, if you want to build up your layers really slowly like this, you absolutely can. Every time you get to a certain layer, um, you can continue on with additional colors, but you can also let them dry and then go back in with additional glaze layers. Remember, you still wanna build up those fatty contents into your, your layers. So every layer you do needs to have a little bit more fat in there. Um, so I'm going to continue on glazing the different colors I see around, because currently it looks like a green banana, because that, that bluish Payne's gray is affecting my yellow and turning it kind of green. So I need to add in a little bit more of those oranges, and you know a little bit burnt sienna up here and you know i think even though my reference photo has the background uh, this is actually pretty accurate for the background and i could leave it like that i think i'm going to actually make it purple because purple and yellow are opposites on the color wheel and that's just going to make my banana there's no easy way of, like, or no nice way of saying it it's going to make, make those colors vibrate against each other uh, which just sounds bad but that's what the colors do. Um, so having uh, the opposite of the color wheel as my background is really going to make this quite punchy. And it's also going to make it look a little bit more pop arty as well. So is that a technical term? Pop arty? Pop, pop, pop arty? Pop, 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 pop. So that is just one color. And you can see how quickly it transforms your entire painting. So I'm going to continue on and we're going to speed this up and then I'm going to hopefully make sure to say the important things if I remember them as we go along. Oh yeah, I should probably mention that my, my reference photo is over there. All right, so let's start warming up the banana. This yellow leans a little bit towards that green color, so I need to warm up the colors with a little bit of this Indian yellow. And that's gonna make it look more of a, a live banana, less of a zombie banana. All right, so let's talk about the color variation. So I put in just a quick swipe of the Indian yellow and because that Indian yellow leans a little bit warmer more towards the orangey color it is making my ban banana look a little bit more alive and less like a zombie banana so just subtle shifts of your color like that are really going to bring your your painting to life and if you're doing skin tones and a portrait you can really get those rosy cheeks in there very very soft changes in color uh, to where it goes from a nice warm tone to a cooler tone for the shadows you know this is a way of building those colors without having to worry about value or your drawing because let's be honest when you're trying to to begin learning how to oil paint that's a lot so this is a way of breaking it down that's nice and easy and i'm going to continue on with a not so zombie banana is definitely, oddly enough, more warm than the highlights. And the really cool thing is that if you don't like something, take your easy wiper, get rid of it. So easy. And it doesn't affect your underpainting at all. It's still there because it's fully dried. Which, 
yeah, you can definitely tell I am looking over at my reference. It's, it's over there. So if you guys do see me peeking that direction, it's because my reference is on a easel right over there. And I think we're done. Okay. <laughs> Kidding. But I could be done. It's so easy. Such an easy process. I love this. Now I will say, I did go over my highlights that were pure white. I did go over them with yellow and I wanted to do that because I can always bring those highlights back. Um, I can add those back in at the end of this, but to try and carve around all of those little highlights is an exercise in me going insane. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna paint over the whole thing and then bring this back out. But if you guys like tedious <laughs> going around all the little highlights, uh, you can. But um, there was a lot of like right in here where it goes from like a yellow to uh, just a like brighter white area. But then in between all of those little highlights are again, those little divots where the banana has more of the yellow tone. Um, this is a nice way of having it all kind of come together in that one, one value, in that one color, and then I can pop the highlights on top, and then super easy instead of having to go around them. Now I do have this Lucas Red mixed with this transparent yellow oxide, and I'm going to kind of break it down with a little bit of linseed oil. That I feel like is a good shadow color. I think this is also a really good color for the little bad spots because they're not dark black. They're kind of like a brown tone. I'm going to also go up here. That stem definitely has a lot more of that brown tone. Um, let me actually knock off the pigment from here. We don't want a lot of that red in that brush right now. So. All right, and before I keep going too far onto the color of my banana, I am gonna knock down that background into uh, kind of a purple value, uh, just because that is going to greatly affect my banana. It's going to, to change the kind of color and values uh, because I think I can keep it pretty, pretty lavender, but those shadows might get a little bit darker. Um, so I definitely wanna do that, but because my background is such a large area, I'm gonna to switch to a larger brush. And so for this area, I am going to go in with just that cobalt violet. The, the violet on to my lighter values. It does change it kind of into just a little bit of a purple, but I want to kind of keep a little bit of that lavender visible. See how strong that titanium white is? So I definitely want to break that down with my linseed oil. Yeah, see, I like that better than that. 
So I'm going to kind of add a little bit of titanium white just into the kind of brighter areas of the background. And then I'm gonna keep the shadows, just the um, cobalt violet with the linseed oil. That way it keeps those values much darker. And then I can just take a nice uh, clean brush in between and kind of fluff them and blend them nice, nicely together. There's a little hair that kind of came off. I can't tell if that's dust or hair. It's a little dusty in here, that's okay. But as a series, they're gonna work so well together. I have banana, I have opened banana, and then I have banana peel. The, the life cycle of a banana. changing the look of my banana I feel like yeah like it's Also, if anybody does notice, while I am going around the edges of the banana with this paint, um, notice I'm choking up. The further you hold your brush towards the front, the better control you're gonna get like a short handle brush. If you wanna get looser, you hold it back here and kind of step back and use your whole arm to paint. But because I'm going around in such a precise manner, I'm gonna kind of choke up on my brush and make sure that it works for me Let's be honest, there's no wrong way to hold a brush. It's just whatever works for you. All right, now the other reason why I wanted to block in my background while I was doing this before I get too far along the banana is because of edges. I wanna make sure I pay attention to my edges. Um, if I wanna have a nice soft kind of transition, I'm gonna need to kind of drag this violet kind of through the edge of where I have that yellow and kind of blend them just slightly. If I want to have a lot of kind of focus on this part of my banana, I'll keep that edge nice and crisp. So you, you can play around with your edges and get them nice and soft and subtle or nice and hard and, and have the focus kind of go straight there. So that's one thing why, you know, make sure you block in your background before you get too far. I'm 
what I am doing is I added a little bit more of the cobalt violet and the titanium white mixture. So it's a less of a linseed oil combination uh, because I'm seeing a lot of brush strokes kind of through that glaze. And if I get my paint a little bit thicker with a little less of that linseed oil, I can kind of minimize those brush strokes and that's why I'm going over it. It's not changing the color, it's just changing those brush strokes. Um, for me personally, I don't like to see a whole lot of brush strokes. Uh, if that's something that you know doesn't bother you, you don't really have to worry about it. But if you do see brush strokes, change the viscosity of your paint with your mediums and then see if it kind of improves it and then you can kind of adjust it from there. I need to put some of this purple into the areas of the banana, like over here. Just to kind of give it some variation. Oxide, which is a very, very opaque color. So if I want to get a nice glaze, I'm gonna to have to add a lot more linseed oil. Which is why I thought it was a sap green. Actually, I do wanna kind of make it a little bit more of a yellow, yellow green. Like an unripened, unripened banana. even smaller brush.
So I'm going to, before I put that Payne's Great onto my palette, I'm going to mix a combination of the Cobalt Violet and this Burnt Sienna, like a darker kind of shadow tone. Kind of lay that in, and I didn't like that first brush stroke because I kind of looped it on a little too fast. So I'm gonna and I can kind of take my brush, clean brush, and erase it right back out. Put a little bit more of that violet back in. Banana tidbit came off right over there. Up here too. And as I'm looking at this, I do still see, even though this is a very dark in value color, it's not dark enough. So I am going to need to put in Payne's Gray. I'm going to add Payne's Gray to, let me actually slide this linseed oil down. Add just a little bit of Payne's Gray down here in the corner. All right, now grab an even smaller brush. what I was looking for. It's kind of a, a darker value, but it's still on the cooler kind of side of the scale. So that cobalt violet and burnt sienna mixture is very warm compared to this Payne's Gray. And that's what I was really kind of needing is a combination of dark in value, but also cooler in color temperature. I had a nickel for every time I slammed my elbow on an easel, I'd be a rich lady. <laughs> Are we gonna have to any proof the easel just, it's all padded? Oh no. I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, now let's get to When I paint my lighter areas where it comes to like the highlights and everything, the shadows feel like they can be nice and thin and it, it works really well for them. But the highlights, I feel like need a little bit of a thicker paint application, a little bit more opacity. So I'm going to use a little less linseed oil and a little bit more of the paint. That was a little bit too much. Still in seed oil though. Got a squeaky 
chair. I swear if anybody can hear the squeaking, it's not me. It's Katie. <laughs> it's not your normal chair. This definitely doesn't look like a, <clears throat> what was it, a jalapeno? Ch a chili pepper, that's what it was. Now that I'm putting in more of those opaque layers, I can tell this is still too thin because that, that underlying grisaille layer is still coming through and making it appear like a grayish green, which looks like a sickly banana. We don't want that. We want a bright, vibrant, ready to eat banana. much titanium weight. Here we go. This is a little too orange. What can I go with it? some areas though. Just like up here there's a little bit of the light kind of coming through. Right now, I am just making various mud, and that is on purpose, because shadows tend to be muddy colors. Like 
that. So I need a bigger brush. Indian yellow and the cobalt violet. And a little bit more violet for my shadow colors. Still add a touch of the. There it is. Yes. Touch of the linseed oil. I feel like with all these shades of like blue, green, and purple, I'm making just like various bruises. <laughs> going to blend this, add in some highlights, and then call it a day.
All that done. Clean off my brush. All right, painted a banana. That's it, guys. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. So that was how easy it was to take a totally black and white oil painting and make it into a fully colored rendered. Uh, painting. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's incredible how you can just, with very few layers, turn this into a bright yellow banana. And then, you know, as this dries, uh, if I wanted to, you know, later on down the road, decide that I want to make it a little bit more of a bright yellow on the side, add in some different colors in those high, or in the shadows, I can do that with that fat medium. And I can continue to build those layers. Uh, but for me, I'm going to call this done. And uh, I'm gonna let this dry, and then eventually, once it's fully cured, about six months, I will varnish this, and then I will have a banana painting series. And uh, if you guys do have any questions, though, about the process, and uh, you know, if you wanna reach out directly to me, you can always get in touch with me on my Facebook page, which is Emmy, host of Jerry's Live. And if you decide that you want to try glazing in oils, make sure you also tag today's class code and post it on our Jerry's Life Facebook group, which is free to join as long as you answer that one security question. Otherwise you are deemed a robot and then not let in. So make sure you guys tag us and I would love to see what you guys do. So thank you so much. I'll see you next time.